1940s was a time of tremendous change for the world, for America, and for our little town. The United States recently came off involvement in the Second World War. In the greater Seattle area, Boeing became a big contributor to the economy, and the McMicken Heights neighborhood was transitioning from a small logging town to a quaint, modern suburban community. In the late 1940s, the Baptist General Conference, in conjunction with their regional offices at the Columbia Baptist Conference, noticed that there was a need for a church in the McMicken area. In the summer of 1948, the conference sent their missionary, Gordon Carlson, and other students to host a vacation Bible school. They set up tents at what is now McMicken Heights Elementary School. People came from all around wondering what was going on. They canvassed the neighborhood and began holding services, and a new church was born. Although the church initially met in a tent, the fall and winter weather made this particular meeting place cold, damp, and not ideal. A neighbor took pity on the fledgling congregation and offered their house until the church could find a more permanent location. Then, in early 1949, a 100-by-275-foot 100 lot was purchased for $1,100, and plans to construct a building started to bloom. On May 5th of the same year, the church formally organized. There were 27 charter members, and the first official pastor, Wilbur Peterson, was hired and came to pastor this new church in the month of November. The church struggled to fund the new church building, but resourcefulness, dedication, and a willingness to get dirty led to the completion of the new meeting place. In the 1950s, the church continued to grow. They welcomed Calvin Churchill to pastor the church in 1952. During this time, the church membership grew and plans for a new educational complex started to formulate. In 1958, the church was again without a pastor. Joe Davis, a professor at what was then known as Seattle Pacific College, was an interim pastor for the church. Then later in 1958, Robert Daly was called and accepted the pastorate. On September 20th, 1958, ground was broken on the new sanctuary. The building was completed and dedicated in May of 1959 in conjunction with the church's 10-year anniversary. Right away, growth led to the need of two morning services. Sunday school classes needed to be held in neighboring homes. The 1960s continued to see a growing church with a united group of people who loved the Lord and saw many people come to a personal, saving relationship with Jesus. In the early 60s, plans were drawn for a new sanctuary to complement the building that was completed in 1959. Unfortunately, the new sanctuary never came to be. In 1965, Pastor Daly stepped away from the pulpit, and the church welcomed Reverend Robert Parker. Parker served until 1966, and then the church called Reverend George Goulian. Pastor Goulian finished out the 1960s and welcomed the 70s as the pastor. The 1970s, under the guidance of Goulian, saw the new bust ministry take off. The church purchased two buses and began to bring children from the neighborhood to Sunday school. This was ambitious and led to many people being exposed to the gospel a lot for the first time. The 70s was a time of growing together as a church, but the membership numbers declined because of the economic downturn at the Boeing Company. Many people had to move to find employment. This did not hamper the people who remained. In 1976, Pastor Goulian left for new ministry opportunities. In 1977, the church called Pastor Tom Edwards. 
He started on June 1st, but by November, his official time at McMicken had come to an unexpected end. This left the now 25-year-old church without a full-time pastor. Reverend John Taransky filled in during the year of 1978. In 1979, the church voted to call Reverend Lamar Vincent. Pastor Vincent was now responsible for healing this congregation and leading it to further its mission for Christ. The 1980s saw the church go through some changes. Shortly after calling Pastor Vincent, the church voted to call a full-time youth minister, Pastor Dale Catcher. The need for someone to oversee the rebuilding of the church and youth ministries was seen as a priority. During this time, the church implemented an Awana program, discipleship program, and new members classes. Unfortunately, the finances of the church could not support two pastors for long, and Pastor Catcher left for new ministry opportunities in 1982. After 10 years of service and the 40th anniversary of the church, in 1990, Pastor Vincent also left the pulpit at McMicken to pursue new ministry opportunities. This left another vacancy at the church. After several guest speakers, in 1990, the church asked Pastor Cliff Gustafson to be the interim pastor while they looked for a new shepherd for the church. This brought on the 1990s. A pastoral search committee was formed and the search for a new pastor began. The church called Reverend Kurt Wolf in 1991 and he accepted. He began service on April 15th. By the time Pastor Wolf began shepherding the church, the neighborhood had undergone a transformation. The airport became a major part of the local community and economy. The city of SeaTac was formed and now the area became a densely packed suburban neighborhood of 23,000 people. Pastor Wolf jumped in with both feet and began to canvass the neighborhood, inviting neighbors to church. He also found himself in relationship with local gang leaders, which led to some of them coming to church and accepting Christ. The church hosted many events for the neighborhood in the 90s, including church picnics, evangelistic outreaches, several different iterations of kids programming, and a missions conference. The youth program was burgeoning during this time as well. Middle schoolers and high schoolers alike attended Friday meetings and midweek Bible studies. And then 1999 saw the 50th anniversary celebration of McMicken Heights Church. New and old friends alike celebrated together. Next, the church saw Y2K, the aughts, the zeros. The 21st century began. McMicken was there for it. In the 2000s, the church continued to fluctuate in membership. Sometimes, especially during holidays, the church would have more people, and then during the summer, there would only be a handful. But the church continued on. We invited our neighbors to several outreach events during the 2000s. The Purpose Driven Life, The Truth Project, and The Great Salmon and Bake were all events that saw the church impacting our neighbors. Then the 2010s. The church celebrated Pastor Wolf's 20th anniversary in September of 2011. We also had a very active vacation Bible school ministry during this time. The church hosted week-long VBS services. We welcomed regularly attending children as well as other children from the community. The 2010s saw people come and go, growth and contraction, but through this time the church remained faithful. Then, in 2018, Pastor Wolf retired. While the pulpit was empty, we had a video series lead us for a while. Then, we had various guest speakers fill in. Finally, with the help of Converge Northwest, the rebranded name for the Columbia Baptist Conference, in 2019, McMicken asked Pastor Jeff McLurg to be interim pastor while the church looked for someone to permanently fill the pulpit. Pastor McLurg began the process of healing and reconciliation within the church. He also helped the church start the process for bringing on a new pastor. Finally, the 20s came. The era of COVID hit. For the first time in the history of the church, there wasn't a regular physical meeting at the building. 
With the rest of the world, we stopped congregating physically. But with resourcefulness and ingenuity, the digital age at McMicken began. We worshiped together online via YouTube. Pastor McClurg would record the message from his bunker at home. Others would contribute prayer and other messages and behind the scene magic would put it all together. COVID brought on the digital age at the church. However, it paused the search for a pastor. It took time before the pastoral search committee was able to start meeting regularly again. Then in 2021, we met with Matt Sidley from Lacey, Washington. God made it very clear that this was the man the church should call to the pulpit. An offer was made, accepted, and on March 1st of 2022, Pastor Matt Sidley took over the lead pastor position. Pastor Sidley has worked over the last two years to grow the vision and mission of the church. He hopes to continue to work God's plan for the church and community well into the future. McMicken has seen many people walk through its doors. Broken people, sinners, people in need of a savior. The body has worked for 75 years to bring hope to the hopeless. One way the church has done this is by seeing the need to get the gospel to all the corners of the world. During its tenure, McMicken has sent out several missionaries. Just to name a few, there's Bud and Gladys Woods with Wycliffe, Ron and Nita Berglund, as well as Jerry and Charlene Holmes with what was then known as New Tribes Mission, now Ethnos 360. Mark and Helen Downing with the Baptist General Conference. And eventually, Ron and Nita's children, Greg and Pam Berglund, Darcy Berglund, as well as Doug and Nancy Berglund. Missions continue to be an integral part of our church ministry as we continue to support many of the above missionaries as well as new ones. The world defines the church by its building, and that is only part of the story. Christ defines the church as the body, the unique people who come together under one purpose, which is to glorify God. The people who have walked through the doors of McMicken are the church. Whether you are someone who attended long ago, or you are still attending today, you are McMicken's story. The church has seen many ministries come and go, but one thing has remained the same. Fellowshipping together, whether it is Sunday morning, a weekly Bible study, weddings, baptisms, anniversaries, birthdays, or celebrations of life, we are the church.